I hate this game. But at the same time, I don't. It's weird. Let's just say this was 2009 and we were in a relationship on Facebook. It would say it's complicated. Back in 2008, I was so excited for this game. I saw the trailer and I was like, all right, bet. Time to have some insane tag team matches. Time to be the Hardys and party like it's 2001. The graphics looked awesome. And to be honest, I was just happy I could finally play in the updated HD arenas. You know how SpongeBob gets all excited for work? I'm ready. I'm ready. That was me going to the store. So I got the game. I put it in. I played it. And it was just okay, I guess. I was confused then, and even now in 2020, I'm still confused. Let's be honest, this is probably the worst SmackDown vs Raw game. However, that doesn't make it a bad game, it's just that the other SmackDown vs Raw games were awesome. But yo, that didn't stop me from putting countless hours into this game. So I thought, why not go back and take a look at the good, the bad, and the ugly of SmackDown vs Raw 2009. First up, the soundtrack, and the soundtrack is great as is tradition in a SmackDown vs Raw game. To this day, Egypt Central's You Make Me Sick is a banger. Dead Man Walking by Blood Simple makes me want to bang my head like my life depends on it. And how could you forget Save Me by Burn Halo, that was also one of my favorites. In this game, they also had Wrestlers and Divas theme songs a part of the soundtrack as well. And listen. There is no song more fire than Maria's theme song. If you didn't bop your head to this song back in the day, you're a liar. So for the fifth year in a row, we got another banger SmackDown vs Raw soundtrack. Then there's the roster. The roster is great at first. Mostly everyone from 2008 is there. Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, Jeff Hardy, CM Punk, and of course John Cena. But yo, what the hell is that? It looks like a random guy named Chad just dressed up as John Cena for some reason. It's not that big of a deal because in the game John Cena looks perfectly fine, but why in the character selection screen does he look like a No Mercy mod? But yeah, the roster is fine, it represents 2008 well, we got the legendary Festus and the return of Y2J Chris Jericho. But then I was scrolling and scrolling looking through the wrestlers and then I remembered. There are no legends in this game. No Rock, no Austin, no Bret Hart, no Hogan, no anyone. So, so THQ, who are we supposed to play with? Jesse, Festus, Jimmy Wang Yang, what more do you want from us? Now, I know why they did this. See, these idiots had a game plan for WrestleMania season called Legends of WrestleMania, featuring like 30 legends and an entire game based off the past. But come on, you pieces of shit couldn't have spared us like 7 of them. Spare legends please, spare legends. That really hurt. Legends are a huge part of making the games fun, to have these matches that otherwise you would never see. All I wanted to do was have Festa's main event Wrestlemania against The Rock, but no. When the Legends game did come out, you could import the SV09 roster into the game. But let's be real, Legends of Wrestlemania was cool for what it was trying to be, but which one would you rather play? The thing is, I can't hate on the roster for what it is because this is what 2008 was. It wasn't the deepest roster, but come on man, a few legends wouldn't have hurt nobody. We got all the yearly arenas, we got Saturday Night's Main Event, we got SmackDown, Raw, and ECW, and they all look awesome. The gameplay is basically the same as SmackDown vs Raw 2008. The controls are the same, the animations for the most part are the same. The major difference now is that there was no more fighting styles. See, fighting styles were cool, but they were very limiting. Now each wrestler can have up to 6 abilities that derive from the fighting styles, so now someone who is super well rounded in real life can be in the game as well. Whereas last year, they were just stuck with the two fighting styles. It gave you so much more freedom, so last year Undertaker's styles didn't allow him to dive outside. But now he can have that ability along with some submission abilities, powerhouse, brawler, it's much more well rounded. This game also introduced signature moves, something that we have to this day, but this was the first game to technically have signature moves. See before in games you could do a wrestler signature move, but they would just be grapples. Now there are special moves that you can actually store. All in all, gameplay is mostly the same. It's more of a quality of life upgrade and one thing for me is the auto targeting was actually quite good. The main gimmick for this game was the improved tag team matches, so now tag team matches got much more exciting. Now you got special tag team moves, wrestlers that are on the apron can do distractions or grab the wrestler, you got the new hot tag feature, and you finally got tag team finishers. And this was more than 10 years ago, so it's cool to see the inception of a lot of features that we're so used to now. 
I just wish that there was more than one animation for the hot tags. One thing I do like is the addition of sliders in this game. We all know that the WWE games have some dumbass AI, but at least now we can edit them and make the AI somewhat better. But yeah, like I said, it's more of a quality of life upgrade from 2008. It still feels and plays mostly the same. The gameplay though overall is just more refined. Overall though, the gameplay is really responsive, it's really smooth, the animations look great, the moves are fun, it's really satisfying hitting a finisher. In this game, they also added the Inferno match. I had been wanting this match forever, and honestly, it was pretty cool. It was so awesome doing impact moves to raise the ring's temperature and to see the flames rise in the air. And finally, once you reach 500 degrees, shout out little Wayne, you can throw your opponent out and he will be on fire. It is kind of easy though, but the visual makes it just look so awesome and it's such a unique match type to have. They probably should have made it similar to the old Beta Live matches and added a quick time event. However, you can't really complain about a new match type. The matches you want to play are all here, TLC, Hell in a Cell, Extreme Rules, Last Man Standing. What I don't understand is why the hell did they remove the Beta Live matches? Now, I didn't sit there in 2007 playing a bunch of Beta Live matches all day every day, but it was still a nice touch to have, and now you can't even do that? Like, I get it, you know, they added the Inferno match, but why not have both? And then remember in 07 how there's a hyped feature of, hey, you can fight in the crowd. Not really the crowd, but you know, an area in the crowd. See, that should have been something that you implement in 07 and you improve in 08 and improve in 09, and eventually one day it would be perfect. Perfect, but no, they just removed it. What? Yo, it's like for some reason that in this game they didn't even want you to go outside. Cause I remember I played my first singles match, I go outside, and this is what the camera looked like. I legit thought my game was broken. I was so confused. I'm like, mom, they gave us a broken game, the game's glitched. There's no way that this is what a WWE game looks when you go outside. But no, this is it. And it's like, what? So you're having some crazy TLC match and you wanna do some cool spots outside? Well, good luck trying to figure out what the hell is happening. This camera angle is one of the worst ideas any WWE game has ever implemented. So they took out crowd fighting, but that didn't mean we didn't fight in the crowd because shout out to good old fashioned SmackDown vs Raw glitches. There was one crowd glitch where you have to hit someone in the post and you can just walk into the crowd and start fighting actually in the crowd in between the people. But speaking of glitches, there's one glitch that I'll never ever forget get. If you play this game online, even if you just played one match, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The freeze glitch. So say you're having a TLC match or a ladder match and you want to win, instead of beating him up, just get him to the ground, freeze him, and he'll be nullified. He can't move, he can't do anything, they're just there. Freeze the wrestler, get on the ladder, get the easy W, and repeat. You're having a tag team match, well why not just freeze the partner and then have a handicap match? This was so toxic, one of the worst glitches ever. If you played an online game and you didn't get frozen or someone didn't try to freeze you, honestly, you should have went and bought a lottery ticket. This was everywhere and people abused us online like their lives depended on it. It was so easy to do as well. All you had to do was go above the shoulders of the wrestler, hold R1, X, and then press square, and you'll see a little flash, and there you go, the wrestler is frozen. SVR Away had a horrible story mode called 24-7 mode, it sucked. Same cutscene every single week. So in 2009 they had a new mode called Road to Wrestlemania. Now this mode was awesome. The only con that I can really find about this mode is the fact that you can't choose anyone you want. But no, this was fun because they actually spent time this year and made 6 separate story modes, all which tackled different themes and involved different wrestlers, and all these storylines are really well written and they're fun to play. And because of that, you don't get the same cutscene a thousand times. Now you got one storyline for CM Punk on ECW, this is such a simple one, you're just grinding trying to make it to Wrestlemania, whereas in 08 you couldn't even choose anyone from the ECW roster, but now you got a separate storyline just for ECW, so you're the new guard and at this time the ECW champion is ECW legend. And Tommy Dreamer. So the whole storyline is you just grinding it out trying to get to WrestleMania and verse the ECW legend for the ECW title at WrestleMania. Then you got Triple H's road to WrestleMania. Now the story starts off pretty simple. Triple H wants the WWE title at WrestleMania. Of course. But then the story takes a turn and develops into something totally different. Eventually it branches out to yo, Triple H, do you want to side with DX or do you want to side with Evolution? Which side are you on? And obviously, depending what side you choose, it develops into a different story, so there's replay value. 
Then there's Chris Jericho's story. This one is cool because you start off as a heel, but slowly as time progresses, you become a face. This one is all about a masked man attacking you and trying to take you out, but that one masked man becomes two and then eventually becomes five, so your mission becomes to find out who's behind this and what the hell is going on. At a glance, Undertaker's story mode seems pretty simple. It's the Undertaker going to WrestleMania to defend his streak, and then you actually play it and you see some crazy stuff just going on. Eventually, Santino becomes a zombie, the urn starts giving people magical powers, the Undertaker gets powers, Boogeyman becomes a crackhead, well, that's pretty normal, but I kinda hate this because even back in SmackDown vs Raw 07, they had some crazy weird storylines just like this, but it's a nice mix. You have these super realistic ones like the CM Punk and the Triple H one, whereas this one is just straight up wild, goofy, crazy, and honestly, it's fun. Then they had a road to WrestleMania that was tag team based to take advantage of the new tag team system and the improvements. This was honestly really cool because this was a WWE storyline that you could play entirely in co-op. So get your friend, your sibling, plug in that controller and just go at it together. See it starts off with them fighting together for the tag team titles but then at the Royal Rumble both of you find yourself in the match and eventually you have to fight each other and then the story branches out into two different ways depending who wins the Rumble. Lastly, we have the legendary John Cena's Road to WrestleMania. This storyline is just insane, it makes no sense, I don't know what kind of crack they were on when they are making this, but yo, this was just weird. Like at least the Taker one made a little sense, you know, the dead man's involved, evil forces, the urn, whatever. Here, I don't even know. It starts off normal, you're at tribute to the troops, you're making MVP tap out, it's all good. But then MVP creates a faction called Better Than Utopia, which somehow ends up becoming a country. They become anti-American and they start attacking a US soldier who's already injured from war. And then some of the matches end up being contested under Better Than Utopia rules. So pinfalls instead of 3 counts are 5 counts. And John Cena basically has to become Captain America and save America from better than Utopia. This is so random, but it's one of the funniest WWE storylines I've played in any video game. It was amazing. Shout out to my boy Tony, you were a real one. I told you I was better than anyone. So I decided to start my own country. Let me introduce my cat. This is my chief of security. Ah. This is my secretary of foreign affairs. But at the end of the day, all I can really say about this is America. And that's the thing, these storylines were so different from each other and it's clear you can tell they put effort into here to make them as different as possible, as fun as possible, and they all had replayability. See for a lot of these storylines your choices actually mattered, which wasn't the case in 08. In 08, one week Jeff Hardy's your best friend, next week he hates you, then he's your best friend again, it was just a mess. But here, at least it's cohesive. In total you have over 90 minutes of new cutscenes, everything is unique and the stories branch out, so I loved Road to WrestleMania mode, but the thing is, as far as game modes go, that's it in this game. See overall this game was an upgrade over SVR 08 because the gameplay was refined, you had Road to WrestleMania, and the thing is if they just took SVR 08 and updated it with the new stuff in 09 and left all the old stuff as it was, it would have been lit. However, this game is mixed because that's not what happened. For all the new stuff they added, they either ruined the old stuff or removed it. So like I said, the camera angle, no more barrier live match, the crowd area was removed, the legends removed, and then they broke my heart because they took out GM mode. This is the saddest thing, they could have legit control C and controlled V the OA GM mode into here and I don't think anyone would have complained, but for some reason they took it out and now it's 2020 and we never got it back. I don't think you guys understand how sad this makes me. General manager mode was my favorite mode. If you've seen my old SVR videos, you know how much I love GM mode, how much I hyped it up and when I got this game back in a way, I didn't do much research, I saw the trailer and I'm like I know I'm gonna buy it, I go into game modes and I'm just there like where the hell is GM mode and man it broke my heart. GM mode gave me purpose when I was playing wrestling games, it made me be competitive. What the hell was I gonna do now, just sit in exhibition and just stare at my created wrestlers the whole time? 
I love doing my own fantasy drafts, signing legends, beating the other brand and destroying it, having 5 star classics, having crazy storylines. It allowed me to be competitive, like I said it gave me purpose, but now it was gone and it never came back. See other than Road to Wrestlemania, what the hell are you supposed to do in this game? There is a career mode but it's not what you think it is, there are no storylines, no cutscenes whatsoever, just non-stop matches until you win all the belts. There are some cool parts like special achievements, really in-depth stats but there is no point, it's just non-stop matches. The purpose for this mode was to level up your created wrestler, as technically this was the only way for you to do it through gameplay. You couldn't just make your created wrestler 100 overall like you can now, you had to grind for it and to get the abilities. But there's no incentive to keep playing like yeah you can level up your wrestler but what's the point, there are no cutscenes, there's nothing, you're just there grinding out like it's an RPG game. Even back in the day I didn't want to grind, instead I just found a cheat online one day which gave every created wrestler I made 90 overall. I wasn't gonna go sit there and do career mode all day every day, ain't nobody got time for that, I put in that cheat and I never touched career mode ever again. What brought me the most joy in SVR09 other than Road to Wrestlemania were the creation suites. Creator Wrestler was awesome as usual and man back in the day I remember sitting there just writing down formulas from cause.ws and just making some really insane looking cause. See this was before face scanning and community creations but you could make some amazing looking creator wrestlers, I mean just look at these. So you make your wrestler and then you go on to make your moveset which is normal you could always do this in past wrestling games but now we can create our own finishers. Yeah so now you make your own finishing move and this was awesome. You had 10 steps to fail out and just make an insane move and you had around 500 animations at your disposal. And this was really really well made. You had taunts, attacks, holds, drops, bombs, whatever. You could even change the speed of the attack that you're doing. So you could make something legit like this, a normal finisher. Or something that makes no sense like this. Or if you just want to win the match as fast as possible and basically have a glitch finisher which makes the opponent's body red right away, you can just make something like this. Creative finisher was awesome because this was something that we wanted forever and now you're out here literally making your own moves. The only issue was it was vastly, vastly OP. No finisher should make your opponent's body red right away. But it was the first year so it's like okay they have some things to fix and they did fix in the future. But this was just so awesome to have man, the more freedom you have in creation the better. And now you're out here literally making your own finishers, your movesets, your wrestlers and then you can make your advanced entrance, add in your pyro, add in your effects and lastly import an mp3 file from your console. It was an amazing time for creation and these were the days. This was the first Smackdown vs Raw game where I filled out every single created wrestler slot. Everyone had unique finishers, moveset, themes, looks, entrance attires, everything. It was so awesome seeing the evolution of the creation suite from Shut Your Mouth all the way to Smackdown vs Raw 2009 and here in 09 you could legit make whatever you wanted. This game also introduced highlight reels, now this was awesome, every time something crazy happened in a match, you can save that clip for later and then just compile it and make a fire confirmation. You could add music, sound effects, visual effects and just put together a montage of crazy stuff happening. This mode had me feeling like I was Spike Lee making movies back in the day. And yeah, that's the game. I don't actually hate this game. Like I said in my intro, it's a decent game, it just had the potential to be something great and what annoys me is that if they just added these new features like create a finisher, highlight reel, tag team mechanics, road to wrestlemania, but kept last year's GM mode and the concept of 24 7 mode, like they have their career mode but it's so boneless. Why not just update 24 7 mode and use that instead of career mode alongside road to wrestlemania? It's just that you run out of things to do. But regardless, I still had fun back in the day, making my wrestlers, making finishers and entrances, going crazy online and locally with my friends. I did have fun playing the road to WrestleMania. It's just that this game could have been something special. Instead, it was just something decent.